Hey everybody, welcome back to Home Recording Made Easy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And this time out, we're gonna take a look at the differences between uh, pre-fader and post-fader when you're using sends and when you would use one over the other. I've been asked this question a couple of times from some of my members over at my mixing membership website, mixingmadeeasy.net. What is that? Good question. Check the link in the description box below. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to do a video and just show you what the differences are if you're not sure whether to use pre-fader po or post-fader when you're sending a track to another place and why you may want to do one over the other. So before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, please hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell. And also, if this is your first time here, you need to go over to home recording madeeasy.com because I want to give you a $50 mixing course absolutely free. It's right on the home page. It's my gift to you just for visiting home recording made easy.com. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I'm going to give you something else absolutely free. So check this out. So now we're here in studio one. Now this doesn't matter. This, this concept is for any DAW. I just happen to be using studio one pro tools, logic, Cubase Reaper. It's all the same concept. Okay. So the example I have here is I have a piano track right here. Okay. So I have a little piano piece. Okay. Nice piano. Okay, we got a nice little piano piece there, okay? And what I've done is I've set up a reverb right next to it here called Piano Verb. And on the Piano Verb here, I have just the stock reverb by Studio One, PreSonus, no big deal. Just pick the plate, this, the reverb itself doesn't matter. And you'll see over here in our sends level, I have one called Piano Reverb, okay? I added my send and our, here's our little send level here in Studio One, this little slider. I like to keep it at zero dB. Now, this little button next to it, the pre-fader on and off, when you first uh, instantiate the send, it's gonna come up blue, which is post-fader. This will click it amber or orange, will be pre-fader. Now, what's the difference? So, here, post-fader. So, what that means is that the signal level that you're sending to this reverb here is after the channel fader. So, what that means is that if I were to turn down the piano track when it's playing back, you're gonna hear the reverb also lower in volume along with it. Let me demonstrate. So here's our piano. It's an exaggerated reverb, I know it, so you guys get the point, okay? So there's the reverb. Now watch what happens when I turn it down. you'll see the reverb track turns down along with it. Why? Because the send level post fader means that anything that happens with the reverb is gonna happen after this fader. So if I turn this back up a little, you'll hear the reverb again. So typically when you send, I mean, again, there's no rules in any of this stuff, this is guidelines, but the most common way to do this is when you're sending to a reverb or a delay, something like that, you would typically use it in post fader mode. So if I'm doing my mix and I set up my reverb in relationship to the volume of my piano, and then as I start building out the mix, I decide that the piano needs to be louder or quieter, and I turn this up or down, the relationship between this and the, uh, the, the amount of reverb is gonna move along with it. So if I turn, if I, if I turn down the piano, the reverb comes down with it in relationship, okay? Now, the complete opposite of that is if I did this in pre-fader mode, what this means, now that it's orange, what this means is regardless of what I do to this fader here on the piano track, the reverb is not gonna change. Let me demonstrate. Okay, so I've turned down the piano all the way. Now all we hear is the piano track. Okay, so Again, if you're building out your mix and you're, you have your level of your piano here and then somewhere along the mix you decide to raise this or lower it, you're going to hear either more or less of the effect of the reverb because the reverb doesn't turn down or turn up with this track in relationship to each other because we picked pre-fader. Does that make sense? That means that the reverb is completely independent from what you do with this fader. 
typically you would use post fader when you're sending it to effects. Although in some of my courses, I've taught this pre fader as well. You could do it either way. Just realize that if you turn down your piano while it's in pre fader mode, you may want to turn down your reverb a little bit as well to compensate for that change that you made here. Does that make sense? You could do it either way. Most commonly it's going to be post fader when you're sending it to things like reverbs and delays. Now, the opposite of that is, well, when would you use pre-fader? Well, let's say we were gonna do something like this. Let me just turn, turn off our, our reverb here. Let's say we were gonna send this piano to something like a different processor, like a parallel compression track where we're gonna over compress that piano. And I did that here in purple. And on this track here, I called it P piano. P means parallel, parallel compression. And I just added the standard, just a fat channel, Studio One fat channel, pick the Everest uh, compressor. And we're compressing this uh, pretty heavily here. Let me turn this on so you'll see this here. Okay, so we're compressing it like 10 dB, okay? So when we're compressing this now, because it's in pre-fader, what that means is, again, no matter what I do to the piano, you're always gonna hear the overly compressed track. So here we go. So we're still here, this track now, this compressed track, because it's pre-fader. And why I would do this pre-fader is again, it completely separates the actual piano track from the parallel compression track. And the reason why I would do something like that is, typically what you would do with something like parallel compression is you may over compress that piano, and then you just may wanna tuck it in underneath the original track, something like this. just to make it a little fatter. If I mute it. And I bring it back. So I have complete control the way I wanna blend the parallel compression track to the original piano track. And no matter what I do with this piano fader in the mix, it's not gonna change the level here. So it allows me to do, it allows me to blend it separately. Again, you could do this post fader as well, but in, again, more commonly, when you're gonna send things to like a compressor, parallel compression, additional processing, things like that, you wanna do it pre-fader. So you have complete individual control between the two faders and you can blend the two tracks together. If you're gonna send it to a time-based effect like reverb, delay, chorusing, that kind of thing, you probably would do it post-fader. So then as you adjust the actual track, it will also re reduce or increase the volume of the time-based effect depending on how you have it set up. So those are the way pre and post fader kind of work. Again, in my courses, I typically will always teach everything pre fader because that's how I keep it straight in my mind. But the question came up on my membership site. I thought I would explain the difference. And again, as I said, with all of our mixing stuff, there's really no hard, fast rules. There's just a bunch of guidelines, but I just wanted to explain the difference so you can understand, well, what's the differences and why would you pick one over the other? And then ultimately you can decide how you want to set things up. And again, any DAW, this is the same way. We just happen to be doing it in Studio One. So I hope this video was helpful and it's cleared up some of the confusion around pre-fader and post-fader. I wanna thank you so much for sticking around till the end of the video. Like, now, like I said at the beginning of the video, you're gonna go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, get your free mixing course. That's right on the homepage. It's worth 50 bucks. Go get it absolutely free. I want you to take that course. And if you really like my style of teaching and you really dig the training and you'd like to try out one of my other paid training courses on my website, I want to give you a discount. I want to give you a 25% discount. I want you to use the coupon code YouTube25. YouTube25. Use that at checkout. It'll take 25% off any one of the training courses on my website, whether it's a Studio One course or any of the other courses. Okay? So go check that out today. And I also want to hear from you. Leave some comments below. Let me know how you use pre and post fader. When do you use one over the other? Are there other examples and when, uh, why you would use one over the other? that you found in your workflow, let me know. Leave some comments below. Until the next video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I'll see you guys really soon. Take care.